Chair for kindly giving me the floor, I think, in my capacity as the, the longest serving member of this committee, and thank you for your kind words earlier about the British MEPs and the British contribution to this committee. It's, of course, a matter of great personal sadness to me that my last act in this committee after so many years is to vote on the withdrawal of my country from the European Union. But it is also with a sense of outrage. Outrage that it came to this, and outrage because Brexit actually is no longer the settled, wholehearted will of the British people. In our election last month, 53% voted for parties that demanded another referendum. 53%, a majority. Every opinion poll over the last 14 months except one has shown that if we had had another referendum, a majority would have voted to remain. Over the last few days, we have seen the Scottish Parliament, the Welsh Assembly, the Northern Ireland Assembly vote against this Brexit deal. Here in our committee, and I think that will be the case in the European Parliament, a majority of representatives elected by the United Kingdom will be voting against this Brexit deal. The House of Commons, however, has approved it. Please note that out of all those assemblies I just mentioned, the House of Commons is the only one that is not elected by a proportional system of representation. It is elected non-proportionally, and the government, Mr Johnson's party, only gained 43% of the votes in this election. 43% of those who voted, that's actually 29% of the electorate as a whole, but he now has 100% of the power. He is, of course, using that power to push through not just Brexit, but the deal that Mrs May negotiated and he corrected on one point. But that is a deal that is particularly bad for Britain. First, of course, it is a blind Brexit. It's a Brexit that leaves many of the key issues to be settled in new negotiations after Brexit, the negotiations on the future framework. So Brexit is happening with the British public not knowing what the final outcome, the ultimate destination of the United Kingdom will be. But it's already apparently clear that Mr Johnson intends to have a distant relationship to the European Union. Outside the customs union, outside the single market, not even aligned with European standards. Not much scope, it would appear, to participate in the security and police cooperation arrangements, in the Erasmus student exchange program, in research programs. That is not in any way guaranteed as, we, as things stand at the moment. So proceeding with Brexit on this basis, without allowing the British public to vote on the actual Brexit deal in a referendum, not just the principle, as was the case nearly four years ago, but on the actual outcome, that is like saying to the public now, ha, huh, you had your say four years ago, now you have to shut up and accept whatever the government comes up with. That is not democratic. Whatever else you may think about the agreement, it is not one that has had the wholehearted, clear consent of the British people. So that is why I and others voted against. I am well aware that a majority in this parliament will approve the deal, so Mr Verhofstadt need not worry about the consequences of the European Parliament rejecting the deal. I'm not sure that his alarmist view that it would immediately lead to a no-deal Brexit is accurate. I'm sure it would lead to a reopening of negotiations rather than accepting a sudden cliff edge. But that 
is not going to happen anyway. Um, we're not in that situation. So I and others voted here and will vote in plenary in accordance with our principles, our values, and what we have always stood for, a belief that Britain's place with its European neighbours is in a partnership working together for the improvement and betterment of our continent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Corbett, for your speech, but also for your engagement in this committee and this parliament. Thank you very, very much. Are there other British members who want to, to talk? Okay, now Mrs. McGuinness and then Mr. Ruiz de Vesa.